You try it as much as you can not to damage the roots when they're very small like this, but sometimes they get right down to the bottom and they take a bit of digging out. But there's a, an example of how Australian plants survive in very dry conditions. Look at the amount of leaf on that compared to the amount of root. Yeah. Um, so the two little leaves we call them, but they're actually cotton leaves and that's part of the, uh, the seed that's got the energy in to get the plant to survive. So, uh, so yeah, you'll be using these today, so I'm trying to pack that in there. So, just down a bit from the top. This is the way I do it. Uh, you'll see other, dem other demonstrators will do it different ways. Um, what I like to do is get something of this nature, a narrow trowel, get it in there and push some of that soil to the side and firm it up at the same time. And then, let's grab a little fella here. Try not to compromise the root system by curling it up again. Get that in there. Just keep a hold of the top there. And then I fill this side. Just <coughs> fill it a little bit until it comes up to about level. And that's nice and snug in there, back to about the same level that the, that the plant was sticking out of the soil in the plummet. And at the same time, you firm all the soil in by, by using this, you've pushed it all the way. Through. <coughs> And it doesn't want to be really hard because the roots are still got to penetrate. So that's just ready for a bit of a spray or a gentle watering. Uh, it's a little bit more robust than seed because you, with seed, when you're watering, even like this, you can flush all the seed to one side. But with a little plant like that, it's got, got a bit of a root there, just a little bit to keep it going until it gets into your uh, protected spot where you're going to raise it. So we'll just go to Little spoon, I, I like to pick a corner with this spoon. And look, there's, a, there's plenty in there. If you happen to destroy one or two by, by driving that down there, well, it's kind of just over the cost of doing the job. And you've got that out. Now, I don't mind mixing these in with here because you can easily tell the difference between that acacia and the little eucalypt. And so we've got a little bit of soil, we want to get them out of that, so we'll just wash them a little bit. So, that so there we go. And here we have got nice long roots, <coughs> so we need to make plenty of depth in, in the hole that we're, uh, that we're making in this pot so to, to put them in. Uh, again, you pick right down the bottom if you have to. That's why you need your soil mix needs to be uh, nice and damp without being too wet, so it'll actually uh, hold without collapsing in when you when you push all that soil over to one side. Grab him by his ears. Put his hair. And just test the, the length there. That looks pretty good, but. Um, if you cut a little bit of the, that root, does that root that matter? Oh, yeah, that's right. If, just, if you take a second, <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah. No, it won't, the plant won't object to a bit of a trim, just to make it suit the depth of the pot. It's better, I suppose, to have it bit shorter so that you can be sure that it's straight, because if you put it in, if it gets circled, it gets problems later on, don't you? Yes. You're right, yes. Mabel, yes. <laughs> yeah, you do, and uh, there you are. Yeah, there's a nice... Now this, this is a, well I think it's a, a little beauty, this one. Bring that out, just a few plants. So these are, these are reasonably mature and the, um, the root systems are uh, netted a bit. So you can see them on the bottom. Uh, they've gone to the bottom, but that's the characteristic of them. But it's still not, I hope this case like that. I find it given a try. But I would rather use a, a super tube than a nursery tube for something of this size. The bottom turn it. You're kind of gentle, but you might have to be cruel to be kind. You know, again.
So you can grab a cat tray. It's a cat tray. And the reason why we use cat trays is because of our seedlings, we can use the bob method in the cat tray. So that's why. And it's also good for holding everything. You've got some notes on seed raising. So and I know some of you have been taking notes. That's all right. You get a little booklet, Wimmera Plant Guide. And a few years ago, our members um, submitted 20 of their best growing native plants in their garden, a lot submitted a heck of a lot more. And so we combined them all together and what were the most popular ones we put into this little booklet. So that's handy, handy guide. You get some seed pots, um, you get some seed raising mix, but for today we have seed raising mix in a tray up there so you help yourselves to that and leave your, your bag and take home. So you've got some to start at home. You've got some name tags, a pencil to write on. The best pencils are, this is a 5Bs, um, 5B, 6B or higher. Most of the pencils you see in shops now, is they're either HB or 2B and they're useless on those name tags. So. Um, I scouted around to get them for today and the only place I could find them in Horsham was in the news agents and I think I've bought a lot so <laughs> yeah. some uh, old envelopes that when I'm saying old because you can see that the sticky's gone so you'll have to stick that down with some sticky tape for collecting your seed write the name if you know the name or where you've collected it and the date so you've got that um, Right, that's all the seed raising stuff. Then for this afternoon when we do cuttings, you'll have some cutting mix. You get a natty little thing like that, and that's for your hormone um, gel, which is your Clonex, but Bob will explain all that later. And these will be the pots that you'll be doing your cuttings in. And you get some steel wool. Now you'd wonder, why do you get steel wool? You make a mistake. Best eraser. <laughs> Another one of Bob's inventions, <laughs> and it's great. Right, I think that's covered it all. So, one thing, Marie.